Oh, so in continuing, in continuing, this will be the hopefully the third part of this particular lecture. And let's just just continue in the context. So where we're at now in Revelation five five is the basic root and foundation. We was talking about how the Ethiopians, the Ethiopic Midrash. Well, this may be a little segue under the subject matter of the Book of the Seven Seals, his Majesty's Bible. It's a little segue taking in light what Revelation chapter 5 is presenting to us with this book of the seven seals. Now, we understand that it's symbolic language, that is, that is verbal hieroglyphs, so to speak. And so we have to be able to decode exactly what it, what it is saying to us in the context, in its proper context, or according to that which is logical, or according to the logos. The logos and our Lord, our Master, our Black Lord, Adonai Yehoshua Hamushiach, that Jesus Christos, He is our logic, He is our wisdom. This is why we keep His His testimony, as well as keeping the law of God, the the true law of Hashem, Baruch Hu, blessed be He. Now, what I have in my hand is a series of other documents, you know, Ethiopic documents um, that compose what we would call the Ethiopic uh, Midrash. Now, some of them we've touched on before, and some we're going to touch on in this particular um, context. Let's put this one here because we were talking about um, the uh, Georgis, Caduce Georgis. So now here's a small stack. But we have some other books um, right here as well. You understand? Here's a, here's a small stack of books. You understand? And some of these books we want to offer to. Now, most of these books are still within the Gutters, in its Gutters, or in its Amharic um, sense or, or translation. Um, and English translations of these works, as well as transliterations, are being worked on. And please be patient and pray for I and I and those who are assisting I and I in this process, and our co-partners and co-ministers as well in this particular process. If one is interested in the ministry, then one can refer to the website and to begin their study. That's the main thing right now, even before we have opportunity to utilize some of the other networks and, 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 and linking with either the call conference, and we're still working on that. Though we've mentioned it before, the, you know, the, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So what we're trying to do is to pray as well as train more laborers for his vineyard. And if one is interested in that, that's discipleship. And those brothers and sisters who have, who have sent forth applications as well as other um, contacts and links, that we are still working towards that. And, and your, your contacts and information that has reached us, we were seeking to respond to that, but the late, you know, the, the harvest is, is the capacity right now on our network. You understand? There's, there's a lot of, the, 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 the capacity, the network needs to be um, strengthened, you understand? Both with prayer and other resources and, and co-laborers in order to really meet the ever-increasing um, demand, and, and, and not just demand, but the ever-increasing response from brothers and sisters out there. And each of us is in a similar but slightly different circumstances as well. And it's not just to, to train one, but to minister to the, the individuals, the, the souls. You know, each of our souls is precious in the sight of the Almighty because it says the Father so loved the world. All that are in the world, that he, 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 he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever should admit in him should not perish, but should have life and life eternal. And that is a true word, my brothers and sisters. And, and these right here, like we said, this is some of the Ethiopic, what we call the Ethiopic uh, Midrash. There's some other books and works too, that, that, but we said this is a good sample. These are some of the ones that, that we would regularly consult with. Now, these are also holy scriptures. You understand from some of the earliest days of Christina, what is called Christianity or Christina, the anointing or the anointed way, the anointed walk, the messian way or the messiah, uh, messianic 
the early Christian movement we know was messianic and of this messianic way. Many of these are some of the ancient scrolls and the ancient scriptures that compose what we know and call as the Ethiopic Midrash. Let's just go through a couple of titles that we have here. We're going to have more online concerning the Ethiopic Midrash as well, but we're putting it this into the context of some of these books. You understand some of these books that, that, that are part of what we call the Seven Seals. And right here, the book of the Seven Seals or the Metahafit Kedusit. Now, some of these works, such as here, here is um, uh, the Malika A. Georgis, the Malika A. Georgis. And we like to make a word, um, pray for that brother. Do not know if he's, if he's in this world or or, or in that world, but Tessa uh, Gebra Selassie, Ze Behera Bulga, you understand, for his, um, his work as, as, as a Azagajna Al Kefafai, as an editor and as a, a, a publisher of these, these, these small books. Some call them the Kitab, you understand, the Kitab or the Kitab. The kitab, kitabot, you could put it in your pocket. You know, you can see that these are really pocket-sized books written within and without. Now, the curious thing and interesting thing about these sort of documents is that you notice they don't have a back side. Generally, they don't have a back side to them. And this is the traditional um, Ethiopic form of printing. The churches, the Ethiopic churches form uh, and the Debtoras and others within the Christian family of of the true faith, the Tawahido Hymenot or the Ritit Amin, the Ritua Hymenot. These are some of the, the, the type of books that are, are printed, the, the form and the size, the general size of these books. Now, um, this one from well use is somewhat falling apart. You understand? So we'll hold it gingerly. But this is the Malika A. Georgis, and you can see um, St. George, or Holy George, one of the early Christian martyrs. Now, this one right here is Bamarinya, or in the Amharic, this particular one. Now, most of these were formerly mostly in mostly in the, in, I mean, mostly in the, the Gutas, in the Gutas. They were mostly in the Gutas or the Ethiopic until the time of his imperial majesty, because majesty brought the first printing press into Ethiopia, and this is another, um, another uh, illumination, black and white illumination of uh, St. George, the dragon, and uh, the maiden right there. The maiden you can see over here you understand, in the picture. And it tells, um, it, this, this is a Malika, uh, and the Malika, uh, um, it's, a, it's a good is word, and uh, the, the, the Melka, when we say Melka Tzedek, uh, or Tzedek, Melka Tzedek is the way we say Melchizedek. And Melk, when it says that man was made in the image, you understand? Now, if you go a little deeper into the word image, you'll see image means the right-hand side of God, which is interesting because it says that when Yeshua, our brother, our Lord, our master, when he, when he resurrected and, and, and he ascended, he ascended and he was seated at the right hand of the Father or to the, to the Melk or the Melka, the Melk side. Now we say Melka Ah or Melika Ah, Melika Ah, it means the image of, in other words, the image. Now, some may think this is just a, notice, it's the image of, but it's words. So, so, so it's, a, it's a different type of spiritual matrix that is created through the meditation on these particular words. It helps the spiritual eyes to really see the reality of it. So these are some of the, 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 the uh, Hagagoria. Some will call it Hagagoria or the tales of the saints, you know, of the different Christian martyrs, their stories or, or praise of God through them, in other words, through their faith and gaining strength for our faith. You can even call it an expansion somewhat on uh, Hebrews chapter 11, which speaks about faith and gives certain examples of those 
who were of faith and, and how their faith helped them to do great exploits. But many of them were, were martyred and became martyrs. So a, a, a chief theme of many of these, besides some of the Wudaseis, the Kidase and the Wudase, some of the praises and some of the liturgies, the Kidase being more the liturgies and the Wudase being more the praises. And then we have the, the Malika'a or the Malika'as. That's not really a proper Amharic, but we're just putting that in that way so one can feel comfortable with really receiving this uh, um, seeming new knowledge. But when we start to get into the root of what it's really about, it becomes really... Um, old knowledge or, or that which we knew but were, were taught and, and, and were traumatized to forget. You understand in our language. Now, his magic brought the first printing presses into Ethiopia, and that, as well as the first printing presses, the first books that were printed were those books for strengthening the faith. And his magic has many um, speeches and utterances which speak towards that even during the time of his um, his uh, uh, Rasene Tacho uh, Rasene Tacho or when he was he, he was Ras as Ras because this is when he brought to Ethiopia the first printing presses and immediately even before some of the or during the time the other publications like newspapers and the uh, Aimero and the uh, Kashate Burhan, um, and some of the newspapers, Adi Zemin, which means New Age, or the New, the new Age, literally. That's what that newspaper actually means. Um, he set about to have the work translated from the Gutas into the Amharic so that the young and the old could under, understand. And some of the first works were the, like the liturgies and books like this right here, um, which is called, uh, or the name that they have here is the Adawit Mezmur. This is, uh, this is uh, Psalms of David, this particular book right here that has this very interesting, um, it's like a kind of a leather. It's like leather here, and then it's embedded there, embedded cross, and some interesting workmanship to these books right here, but something very even ancient about these particular works right here. Well, this is an Amharic Psalms of David. It has your, your Nabiyat Salotana, uh, the, the prayer of the prophets, some of the daily prayers, uh, Salot, your Salomon Mahali. It has Ka'asara, Ka'asara, Nistu, your Salot, Metzahistoch, Gara. So it also has like 15. Fifteen books of prayer of of of, of prayer, yes, elota meta toch, and that's one way of plural pl making this plural meta toch. But notice that the meta kedus is 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 one is still one book. Now there's additional there's there are other books, and we understand the different books and the different type of books in the meta kedus that compose those seven type of books or seven type of seals, like the Torah, the Orit, is the first. The Orit is the first. And, and that's, that's, that's the order. You can say that's the, that's the cornerstone, the groundation, and the foundation. That these other um, books and scriptures are heavily connected with the expanding. We see these as being a... a like high school, these would be more high school level, even though many Ethiopians are more familiar with these sort of books, perhaps because they're convenient and the course of printing traditionally that to print the entire scripture, you understand, um, though it was in different barana scrolls, parchment scrolls, and, and in different volumes to be brought together it was His Imperial Majesty Kadamawi Haile Selassie that brought it together in its proper context as the book of the seven seals or in this particular form right here, as well as was the, the one responsible for the printing of these other um, books and books of spiritual praise books like we talked about this one as well, 
just to go some, through some of the titles in this, we'll call this the Ethiopic Midrash, you understand, to bring that point front and center. This right here is the Fikare Yesus, and we touched on this before, and um, brothers and sisters, we was asked if we would uh, translate this and work on translating, and we, we did not... We, we did not complete that process yet, but we, we, were, not, we were not deaf to it. We, we heard you. We heard you. Keep your prayers and support for us in this effort. And we're coming forward with translations of, of these as soon as possible. But we still want to encourage ones, as we said, for them to translate. You know, it was for them to take the new birth, you understand, forward, to walk forward in that new birth, to learn the language and our Amharic Bible homeschooling, the CDs, and, and some of the booklets are being updated right now, and y'all willing, they would be available very soon as well to help build that basic foundation. And the first school for us, the first school that one should be interested in spiritually, psychologically, and even when and where possible physically enrolling in, within the, the, the Amharic literacy, on the Amharic literacy level, is in the Bab Beit. And that begins with the Fidel. You know what I'm saying? That begins with just the basics. It's just the basics. You know, the basic 33, you understand? As well as the basic E-U-E-I-A-O, which is the basic Fidel, as you go across the different syllabolic sounds. Because each sound is a, is a syllable. In other words, now, the Fikare Yesu, so brothers and, and sisters who are aware of this, yes, it is an important book, but what's interesting about it, it, it it's an original work, yet it is based on the prophets. It's based on a digestion of the prophets and the prophecy. So in the book, there are many, there are many references both to the, the gospel and quotes from the gospels as well as from the prophets. So it, it further helps to, 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 to bring together in our, in our hearts and minds both the, the Old and the New Testament, in other words, seeing the New Testament prophecies in Christ and in their manifestation in this present time. And this book was also a book that his imperial majesty took a, a special interest in, in having published. And even at the time towards the end of the reign, according to what some histories have reported, this book was, was published. And it was almost a prophecy on what was happening to Ethiopia, how Ethiopia or many Ethiopians were apostizing themselves, or the Widket, the Widket that was occurring there. But not just among Ethiopians at home, but also us in the diaspora and us abroad, because it's about those two families of the Lord. So this book is very interesting. And, um, but it's not as though, if you don't, it's not as though you would not come to the same overstanding in the Spirit of God being led by the Holy Spirit from studying the Bible. In fact, by the time you get to these books in the high school, Dereja, on the high school level, you will have a, once you have a good foundation, these books will really illuminate one. But if you could read it without a good knowledge of the Old Testament, and there's a potential to be confused. You understand? Without, without, outside the knowledge of the Bible. So the Bible is, those 66 books are really important. The 66 books come before the 15 books. The 66 books come before these um, Tinnish Metahist Toch as, excuse me, as well. Now this is, this is probably the more popular, and this is like uh, two to three versions of the more popular um, the more popular book that most Ethiopians and especially Orthodox um, read on a daily basis and pray and pray from. Now, another word we have to note in our reprinting of these, we will seek to restore the Ethiopian illuminations to their proper and put them in their proper context because this one right here, it has the, um, the Catholic Mary in, in the print version. So we can see where there's, there was this kind of almost a spiritual warfare, you know, saying even in the church where some rejected totally the black images and, and others, you know, and embraced the, the whitewashed images, you know. And um, those who embraced that seem to have won out uh, on a certain level. But at least so far, 
the context of the word remains one and the same. That so far the, the greatest perversion um, that, that the church, Ethiopic church has, has suffered on, on one level and a major level is on the visual level. You understand? There are some other concepts. So these are usually some other de uh, denomination, like the Pente, and, and, and they have the, the Ethiopian Catholic Church, so from some that follows the, the Roman liturgy, the Roman Mass, uh, kind of some, some stuff there. But if ones want to choose that, so from some as we choose this. But, but when we print these books up, we intend to um, restore, restore the Ethiopic illuminations. You know, and that's one of our campaigns to restore the Ethiopic illumination. You can tell this right here is what's her name, um, Lucretia. You understand that they have falsely in the position of uh, Mary, and Lucretia was the, I think she was illegitimate too, daughter of Pope Alexander the Sixth, as well as Caesar Borgia. That's the whitewash, the white Jesus image from from romantic. Uh, uh, Renaissance, so-called time, the Medici's, they were part of, they funded that, you know, they funded the, a lot of these paintings, which were basically family members of the Pope. So you're looking at this picture and say, oh, it looks just like Mary. It's actually uh, Pope Pius VI, the Borgia's daughter, sister, you know, and there's a lot of crazy incest and a lot of abominable activities these individuals were involved in. So to have their pictures in these books really spoil it, but we have to be um, of, 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 of a higher spirit, you understand, to recognize, overstand that, and still to set our goals. Don't be, get too emotionally twisted about it, but this is not our image, imagery, and recognize what it is for what it is, and seek to work with others in restoring the truth and the blackness, you understand, and the Ethiopian woman, mother, sister, daughter, wife, into her proper context, as that, as that mother of, of God, as a, as a mother of the Elohim, okay, the Bible says we are gods, ye are gods, all of you. So, so it, it's straight right there, and Christ said the scripture cannot be broken. So how can you say that we blaspheme? Be that as it may, this right here is the Zoater alone, and this is one version of it. You understand? This is another version of it. You understand? And this is a third version right here of it. Now... Two of these go together. These two right here basically say, which means continual prayer. And these are some of the main prayers that by most of the Ethiopian and the Orthodox, Tawahido, Mitmanan, or Amanyoch, these are some of the daily prayers that are recited and reflected upon as a, as a daily uh, meditation. Now, this right here is the Malika Ah Mariam and the Malika Ah Yesus. The Malika Ah Mariam and the Malika Ah Yesus. And like we said, the word Malika Ah would mean the image, but also means the right hand or the righteousness. It, 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 it's the righteous reflection of godly character when you understand the root of the word and then the application, the application of the sense. But literally, it would mean the image of. But the image has to be put into its proper scriptural and even its eschatological um, 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 context, both the physical as well as the metaphysical application. So these books go together right here. Now, additionally, in the series of Midrash, you even have books that are this small. And you can see on this, this tiny book right here, you can see on this tiny book right here that, that they have... Um, force on the Ethiopians, and so the, we know the Ethiopian angel. I'm sure most of you have seen the Ethiopian um, angel, which is in the Ethiopian face, and it reflects the people. And it's the, the true image of many of the angelic manifestations. But here, they have the pudgy, fat, white baby head right there on this little tiny, tinnish, tinnish book right here. But thankfully, the content and the word is of much higher value. In fact, that picture there devalues the word, but the word still, from our study of it, is still in context. They've been very faithful to keep, keep, uh, just from the goods, you understand, keep certain words. It's like there's a whole rhythm to the word, so it's very hard for, for one to insert another word into the goods in the context because so many have, 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 have that as a rhythm. There's a certain... Uh, there's sort of a matrix to it, you know, I don't want to say magic, but there's a certain code to it. 
So a, a, a wrong word would actually throw it really out of code, and people would, I think people might protest more, and the spiritual warfare, and even the warfare as it was in the early days of the church, would almost happen because of that. But certain pictures have been tolerated, you understand, and maybe tolerated a little bit too much. But this is an example of one of the small, small, you understand, one of the small, small books right here. And this one, this one is called uh, Asmata Melakot. And Asmata Melakot would be interpreted as the names of divinity, the names of divinity. And like we said, some of these are like the, you know, in, in Judaism, there's like the tefillin and, and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the phylacteries where, where, where certain, certain parchment and scrolls are attached to different parts of the body. And that's also a, a very Ethiopic um, tradition, the book Lefafa Siddiq. And we also have that book um, published too by Lion and Juice Society is a recommended book that can explain that use of word in, in, in its, like, in, in its phylact, phylactic sense or uh, uh, like the tefillin, like the Jews would wrap certain script, certain scripture. Actually, actually, it would be, I think, the left arm, you know, on the left arm and so forth and so on. But be that as it may, I keep this because the book is, is kind of small. I keep it in another book because there's a chance that it might um, get lost or missing. Now, this is an amazing book. This is an amazing book right here, right? Um, this is the Malika uh, Raguel, Raguel. Raguel um, is one of the names of actually, yes, Moses' Moses' uh, father-in-law is named Raguel, as well the one who's also called Yotar or, 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 or Jethro. And um, he is also, uh, uh, there's another name. He has another name as well. Pray to I at the moment. I want to touch on this. But um, Raguel is also... Raphael, in other words, Ethiopians generally won't say Raphael, it's, it's more Raguel, and the, the, the connection with Horeb, you know, the connection with um, Moses' uh, father-in-law, it's kind of interesting, but this is a book, some would say it's a book of, um, it's a book of magic, you know, it's a book of magic, it's, it's, it's Kabbalistic in, in, in many of its senses to give one's, uh, a brief uh, view of of this particular um, scripture here, um, and the red is used in certain interesting in certain interesting ways right there. So it has certain sigils, certain patterns, certain ciphers, and ones have speculated on what the meaning of it. Here you can see the lamb right there. So this is all from this is all Ethiopia. You know, saying this is all ancient Ethiopia. So when you see some of the stuff in the European tradition, even this right here, when you see some of the things in the European um, tradition, know that these things have existed in Ethiopia. Notice that these are older in the Ethiopian context than so-called um, Kabbalism in the European sense. And we know that many discoveries were made in Ethiopia and found and recovered in Ethiopia that were co-opted, you understand, by the so-called magicians and other ones. That's, that's good enough for right now, some of these particular um, images um, from this illuminated um, um, midrash, or this would be like more on the level of a Kabbalistic, a Kabbalistic, a Ethiopic Kabbalah or Kebbalah when we speak about the Kabbalah. Like we said, a lot of people be interested in these kind of books and say, yeah, I want to check that out, but it will be inexplicable in its true context, and one might hurt themselves. You understand? One might hurt themselves or hurt others. If you hurt others, then, of course, there's, there's the balance, you know, then you really hurt yourself. So um, it, uh, build a good foundation, you know, like Christ even has taught and reminded us of um, – building our house on a, on, on, on a shore and on shore foundations instead of building it on, on sand. And building on sand would be just to rush, you know, to get it for the wrong reasons and not being properly, properly and duly 
and duly uh, prepared. Now, this is also another book right here, Tim Herta, um, uh, Chibuat, uh, teaching a small, one of the small books as well, as you can see right there. This is another one, you know, um, and we keep that on the side there because it's easy for these, the real small ones to, as you can probably tell, to get lost. Now, this is the Malika Medhane Alem. And it deals more with uh, the themes of the of 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 the crucified Savior in its Kabbali Ethiopic Kabbalistic and metaphysical. Is, once can say Gnostic, but th that word has been so thrown around so much. We always like to put it into a better um, context before we jump on that bandwagon of just saying Gnostic too too loosely. You understand? But when we understand this proper aspect from Christ, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, in that sense of being a Gnostic, a knower of the truth and therefore free, then yes, Ethiopia from ancient times is Gnostic. Now, this is also another book which has the Selota Zawetur, or the daily prayer, but also has the Fidel. Um, the, in the Lasana Ge'ez, or in the Ge'ez. And this is another small book here, one of the Midrash, you understand? But His Imperial Majesty is and should be credited for bringing, you know, Ethiopia and Ethiopians to the level where they could publish these sort of books for themselves, utilizing the technology that was... Um, that was just coming out in the world at that time. If you notice, Gutenberg, it's Gutenberg, the Gutenberg Press, that allows for the Bible in the West to also get disseminated. And His Imperial Majesty would bring this process into Ethiopia freely. But when you look at Europe, where this technology was so-called uh, rediscovered or created, as they would say, um, people were getting killed and martyred and persecuted because they said they wanted to read, just because they wanted to read. So just imagine that. Now, the final two that we want to show in this particular demonstration and series, and this is still part of the Book of the Seven Seals series, but we want to show some of the additional um, books and scriptures, Ethiopic scrolls and scriptures. Like we said, this is more, these will be more considered a high school, and even some of them potentially a more collegiate level of education because one needs have a good foundation. His Majesty said there's three kinds of education. Do you recall that one? There's three kinds of education. There is general education. There is, 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 is higher education. And then there is special education. So we have to understand how these particular um, um, levels, how they are similar, how they differ, and what order. What is the order? You see, we live in a chaotic world because it has no order. You know, somebody may want to take a special, a special education course, but don't have the real general knowledge, the basic knowledge to really benefit and to really learn or comprehend on that special one being the higher class. You know, like in school and college, it's prerequisites. If you want to take um, physics or something like that, you at least have to have you know, basic math and algebra and some of the basic classes, like I think even bio and chem, you've got to have that first and even calculus before you really can take uh, physics because on the physics level, they're going to be speaking what will seem like a whole different language. They're going to speak a whole different, and you can't be saying, oh, what's that? Just tell me what that is and, and then I'll get it. No, that's arrogant, ignorant, and any sort of you know, any sort of discipline that has to be weeded out, that has to be separated apart, that has to be put out of consciousness. You know, we're saying that if ones don't want to put out of consciousness, they must be put out of the school, you understand, know out of that learning cycle. You know, we're saying that's part of the discipline, you understand, know both within and in the particular environment. So these two right here, one is Gutters. This is the Lasana Gutters. This is the Mesmore uh, Dawit the Psalms of David in the Gutters, and this right here is the Metafet Elot where Mezgeber Elot. 
and that means the the book of prayer and the treasury you know saying the treasury of prayer to say like a, a repository of many different of many different um books of of prayer and praise of uh wadase prayer and kadase praise uh, or more liturgy the kadase as we said is 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 more of the liturgies some might know this as an anaphora have heard that um um that word used before the anaphora the anaphora also comes into the context but it's for us to learn how do all these things work within the system what is the true ethiopic system how does all this work as a living spiritual for lack of a better word machinery or even a matrix you understand because as we go through the process this is how we are born when we're born again the church and that fellowship or bible study is very very important i mean it's extremely important because it's the church which is like our mother the church become that family not the building so much but the family the christian family become like those who help the newborn help one who is born again who is a child really grow and grow up just as a as a properly a logical family in that sense a true family and many of us might not have had true families in that in the worldly sense but when you understand what the world is about and the so-called mystery of these things then 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 you understand why and it wasn't really so much the individuals it, 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 overall you understand each one in their own turn as it were but it's it's this world you understand and then you recognize exactly what's behind this world satan you to regame you you understand let him be let him be cursed he is cursed we just remind him and and you know uh, get behind me let you know let satan get behind you don't you follow satan if anything let 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 satan follow you command him you have the authority as a newborn you know send and stop looking at your brother or sister but look at yourself and then you'll be able to really maybe help the brother or sister you know and i've been there i've looked at the other person more than i looked at myself and when when you really make 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 um tradition you really make movement you really make progress you can look at yourself and can really be helpful to your your partner you know saying you can be helpful to the other now this right here has a lot of books in it has many many books this is just the table of contents of the moucha the moucha of the books that are in this particular book right here and the majority of this as we said before it has a couple of pictures and some of them not being ethiopic not being from our own root and truth you understand but for range pictures which need to be weeded out but it has very few pictures it's not there just to uh, like in the western tradition it seems like they got a couple of words but a lot of pictures and stuff like that all of them are whitewash you understand um thankfully most of this is word you understand therefore it's a spiritual matter a logical matter but unfortunately some of the whitewashed pictures have have crept in to our ethiopic tradition and they need and they must need go you know saying be weeded out you know saying be done of them because that also is affecting us as a as a, as a collective even down to our relationships cuz we're not looking in the mirror but we're looking at someone else and seeking to live in someone else's image instead of living in the image of God that God created us that's why you got so many people that are unhappy with themselves and have other sort of complexes but be that as it may um you know this right here this is the good news of his imperial majesty another particular document but one thinking about the pictures why did right here was think about this book with all these different so-called Jesus sisters you understand from the european tradition but but this is the reality of the mawi hala salasi that's the reality right there in the midst of all these lies but people prefer all these lies or misconceptions around here instead of going straight you know the straight and now way of the king of kings and his christ so anyway more to come on this particular subject matter y'all willing